What's going on, party people? It's your friendly neighborhood youth pastor, and we are at the start of a two-week series called Worth It. It's a two-week series about Easter. And I want to tell you that Easter isn't just about bunnies or candy or eggs. It's time for joy and celebration as we look to Jesus' victory. But it's also remembering the pain and suffering of Jesus. So we're going to look at Jesus' final days, his death, his resurrection, but we also want to look at the early church. But first, a story about me. So I had a concussion, and I play basketball, I cycle, so those are really, you know, obvious ways that people can have a concussion, but that's not how I had a concussion. My concussion came from cleaning. I hit my head on a cabinet. That's right, party people. So obviously, you know, I was hurt, but it was also depressing to be so clumsy. Uh, when I was going through that time, I had to stop working. I couldn't exercise. I, I, I couldn't look at a screen. I, there's not a lot that I could do. So it was very depressing, actually. But there were some people who, well, everybody tr came and said stuff to me and they tried to encourage me. But I felt the, the most comfort from people who had gone through concussions. They would say to me, you're gonna make it to the other side. This is what you need to do. Uh, just trust the process. And the things that they said to me really comforted me because they had gone through what I was going through. And aren't you like that as well? Don't you feel the most comforted when someone has gone through what you're going through and they're able to, to talk to you and give you hope and advice and stuff like that? I would imagine so. I think that we all feel comfort from someone who understands what we're going through. Life is tough when we feel alone. When life gets tough, it's, it's easy to feel alone. Like, like we're the only ones who've ever experienced what we're going through or that no one else could possibly understand. And even though people tell us that God is with us, it can still feel like nobody's with you. Like, you're stuck at home, you're, the world is in a pandemic if you're watching this during COVID-19, you're not sure what's gonna happen next. But even during everyday life, it's easy to feel alone at school or in your family or on your sports team. I've had teens tell me that school is the loneliest place. Imagine being in a place with hundreds of people and still feeling like nobody gets you, still feeling alone. Right now, a lot of families are struggling. Right now, the, the filming of this video is right in the middle of this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, where, you know, the Olympics are, are postponed, only essential services are open, there's no school, school is canceled for we, we don't know how long, and, and we're stuck at home just every day, day after day, and it, it can be scary, and you're feeling anxious, and just not in control and you're feeling alone even though we're all in the same situation when it's difficult like this we might wonder like why would God let something like this happen you know like is it really worth it and and this may come as a surprise to you but even Jesus knows what it's like to have questions like this in a time of suffering our scripture for today is Matthew chapter 26. I'm gonna get you guys to, to read it on your own, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick summary and then read a couple verses with you. If you've been around church before, you've probably heard that Easter is all about the death of Jesus and the resurrection, and that's why we celebrate it. But before we talk about what happened after Jesus' death, we wanna talk about what happened before his death. Because I believe that by looking at that, we can get a clue about how Jesus attacks suffering and how we should approach suffering. So again, you're going to read Matthew 26 in your small groups, but I'm going to read uh, Matthew 26, 36 to 39 right now. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and I pray. He took Peter and two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow 
to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. In this one chapter, Jesus experienced more suffering than most of us can imagine. He said goodbye to his friends. He was plotted against. He was let down by everyone he loved. He was arrested. He was taken to trial. He was sentenced to death. He was spit on. He was beaten. He was betrayed even by his two closest friends. And so you might imagine that your, the picture in your head might be Jesus walking to his crucifixion with just the peace in his heart, knowing, you know, what I'm doing is the right thing. But Jesus had anguish. Jesus had pain. And this garden story tells that. In the, the, the account that we just read, it said that Jesus was overwhelmed. He was in anguish and he was exhausted because he knew exactly what was about to happen. They even tell us that Jesus' sweat turned to blood, a medical condition that happens under extreme stress. So in the final hours before Jesus' death, we see him asking, God, is there any other way? I also wonder, like if I were Jesus, I'd be asking another question. I'd be saying, God, is this even worth it? For these people who betrayed me, they turned their backs on me, they humiliate me, they're spitting on me, they're, they're trying to kill me. Is it worth this sacrifice? And for me, if I have to be honest, if I might say no. I might say no. Is it worth it? We've already said that comfort matters even more when it comes from someone who relates and what, who has gone through what you've gone through. And if that's true, then Jesus can understand and comfort us better than anyone because he understands suffering better than anyone. So when life gets hard, one of the reasons we can hold firmly to Jesus is because he understands suffering better than anyone. So is it worth it? When Jesus stared death torture, and humiliation in the face, he decided that, yes, you were worth it. I want you to take that in. You matter. You were worth all that Jesus went through on the cross. You. You were worth it. But I also want you to think about this. If following Jesus ever gets hard or exhausting, and it might, even in the situation that we're in right now, I challenge you to say, Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth following. Jesus is worth going through hard times. And even when you have your fear and your doubts, it's still worth it to follow Jesus. Life isn't going to be easy. And following Jesus isn't always going to be easy. There might be days where you want to give up or on those days, I hope you remember that God is with you and God understands you. Why? Because the Jesus who suffers, suffered with you. The Jesus who suffered, suffered with you. I want you to take that in. And I hope that gives you peace and hope. I'm going to leave you guys with a blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. That's my time for today. Peace.